Before we get started with our story, we have a short message for grown-ups from our friends at Indeed, a company many in our network have come to rely upon. What's better than finding quality candidates? Finding them instantly. For a powerful hiring partner, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. When you can do it all with Indeed, find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Something we love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy. Because with Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Indeed knows that finding people with the right skills makes all the difference when you're a hiring team of one, something Clark has experience with. Visit indeed.com slash sleep tight to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash sleep tight. Indeed.com slash S-L-E-E-P-T-I-G-H-T. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. In the last part of our story, Esther is looking forward to the school year being over so that she can head off on an adventure. When she arrives home after school, her mother tells her to finish her chores quickly and come inside. There is something she wants to talk to her about before her brother gets home. Esther is worried. When she goes into the house, she realizes her mother knows all about the book, and Esther is worried about what she is going to make her do with it. Esther is very surprised when her mother says they will start reading from it every night. The Magical Book of Dreams, Part 6 After Esther finished her dinner, she helped her mother clear the table, wash the dishes, and set the candle for the evening study session. Her brother was supposed to help, but he had run off to the bathroom first and would return just in time for all the work to be completed. Walking back into the kitchen, her little brother said, Oh, you guys cleaned up already? I was going to help. Sure you were, Squirt, Esther said as she went to the bathroom to wash up before she started the evening study. As she washed her hands and face, she looked, like every night, at the photo of her father hanging in the bathroom. What would her father think about the book she had found? Would he support her dream to see the rest of the kingdom? Esther knew she had to be patient, but shared her father's restlessness. School would soon be over, and with that, the opportunity to pursue what she wanted to do. While the other students might apprentice with a business in Shirewood or go on to further study, she desired to see the world, to meet unicorns, dragons, fairies, and princesses, to swim in the ocean and learn from the wise gnomes of the forest. She just couldn't imagine living in such a slow place as Shirewood. Esther, are you daydreaming again? Her mother yelled. 
Your brother is finishing his homework, and I've told him you have something to share. Esther dried her face and gave her father's picture one last look before she joined her mother and brother at the table. What are you working on, Squirt? Esther asked. In class, we are reviewing how to calculate the area of a vegetable bed so that we can know how much seed we need to plant, he replied. It's pretty easy. The school is really emphasizing growing food and plants lately, Esther said. The people of the town can't exist on dragon candy alone, Esther, her mother replied. Do you have the answer, Squirt? Of course. You just multiply the length of the bed by the width, and then use the guidelines set forth by the elders as to how many seeds we need to plant in that area. Sounds like you got it, Esther said. Luckily, I don't have any homework tonight, so I guess I can go straight to reading. Ahem. <clears throat> Her mother cleared her throat to remind her of what they had agreed to do after her brother had finished his homework. Oh yeah, I forgot, Esther said reluctantly. She had been reading the book in secret for so long that she felt somewhat reluctant to share it with her mother and brother. Esther pulled the leather-bound book from her bag and placed it on the table. What is that old thing? Her brother asked. It looks like one of those old books the elders like reading. Is it full of magic potions? No, this is a book I found, Esther replied, thinking that that would suffice as an explanation. You found a book like that? Where did you find it? Her brother asked. Esther looked at her mother to see just how much she was supposed to reveal. Tell him, Esther, we should not have any secrets from each other. Esther sighed and continued. Ah, one day after school, I took a different route home. I was bored and wanted to see something different than the tree-lined paths or our neighbors' cottages and houses I commonly see. I wanted to walk on something other than the slippery, stone-covered moss, to have a little adventure, like the explorers that used to come this way. So when I met the fork in the path, I turned right instead of left, and went down the old path they used to take many years ago. You walk down the path that leads to the gateway of the Forbidden Kingdom? Her brother said, shocked. Wow. Actually, Squirt, Shirewood is considered a gateway to the Forbidden Kingdom. This is just the path the travelers took. Just continue, Esther. You don't need to correct him, her mother interjected. I tried to walk quickly on the overgrown path. It was soft and squishy and covered in vines and moss. This path is not so different from the others in the village, just more overgrown. Though, at the time, the birds did seem to be singing much more loudly. Maybe I was disturbing them. After a short walk, I thought that whatever magic or stories this path once held, they had long since disappeared. It was not as adventurous as I had thought and not much more interesting than any other paths in Shirewood. Just as I was about to turn around, I came upon a clearing. In the clearing, there were stone benches and an old broken water well. What kind of clearing was it? Her brother asked, eyes wide open and fascinated by what he was hearing. Well... It wasn't that far down the path, but I guess it could have been a meeting place or place where the explorers rested before continuing on their journey. Or it could have been a place to gather some food as the bushes around the clearing were full of berries, which I haven't seen elsewhere in our town. Yes, 
those berries are unique to that area and are known for their sweetness. Good food for long walks, her mother said. After I had had a little snack, I saw out of the corner of my eye something that looked like a box made from rocks, and I noticed that something was inside. I lifted the rocks off the top of the box, and inside, I found this book. After that, I ran home, and here we are. Wow, this is much more exciting than learning about how many seeds you need for a plot of vegetables. Esther's mother sighed. Ah, but when did you find it? Thinking for a moment and noticing her mother's eyes staring at her, she replied, It hasn't been that long, Squirt, but I have been keeping it a secret because I thought I might have to give it up to the elders, and the stories within were so interesting. So we are now all going to enjoy the book's stories, her mother interrupted. Why don't you share something contained within its pages? I guess I could continue where I left off reading the last time, Esther said as she opened the book. Her little brother's eyes opened wide as she revealed the old writing that its pages contained. Esther started. We had traveled along the path that ran parallel to the water route for a couple days, stopping each night at small, somewhat run-down inns as the need for rest required. The path was well used, but we didn't meet many other travelers. One of the reasons that most would prefer the water route that Erava was taking was the quality of accommodations. Sleeping on a bed of grass would have been more comfortable than the mattresses many of the inns provided. Somehow, the mattresses I slept on had sharp points that irritated each part of my body. Judging by the way that Selena was walking, taking frequent opportunities to stop and nurse her back, it had also bothered her. All that discomfort was forgotten when we reached the end of a meadow to once again walk amongst the grand trees of this forest. It was midday and the sun was bright and warm. We entered the forest through a clearly marked entry point. As we walked, the rustling of leaves and chirping of birds created a wonderful symphony of sound that filled the air. What I guessed were fairies could be heard singing in the distance. Far off, the sound of gnomes working could also be heard. Sunbeams were peeking through the treetops and dancing across the forest floor. I couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder at the scene around me. The experience of walking in such a beautiful place washed away all the pain from the nights of uncomfortable sleep. The smell of damp earth and wood was strong and revitalizing, pushing Selena and me to continue walking deeper and deeper into the forest. Continuing on our way, we eventually came across a small stream that wound its way through the trees. We stopped to refill our water bags, rest, listen to the gentle trickle of water, and take in the peaceful surroundings. We couldn't stay long as we needed to find a suitable place to sleep for the night, and there weren't inns on this length of the trail. Without a word, we got up and started down the trail again, surrounded and protected by the tall trees. Selena and I hadn't talked much all day, walking in silence as if we were old friends. But our silence was broken 
when we stumbled upon a clearing unlike any I have ever seen. The ground was covered in a blanket of glittering purple flowers, and the air was filled with the soft glow of what I thought could be fireflies. The branches of the trees were lower in places, creating a roof for us to rest under. We should stop here, Selena said to me. I have heard that many walk through the night until they reach the next inn. But looking at this place, I can't imagine any inn we will find will be as comfortable as this. Or as beautiful, I replied. After we had picked a place to lay for the night, sheltered from any chance of rain, I noticed a tiny figure hovering in the center of the clearing. It was a fairy with delicate wings that shimmered in the light and hair made of golden threads. She smiled at me and called me forward in a voice as sweet as a bird's song. Selena looked on with a smile as I approached the fairy. The fairy told me that we had stumbled upon her secret garden and asked what would be my wish if she could grant it. I thought long and hard about what I could wish for. Finally, I replied that I wanted nothing but the continued harmony and joy I had experienced in the mystical forest. The fairy laughed, smiled, and danced around me singing a song. Before I knew it, the fairy was gone. Walking back to Selena, I said, I had no idea that fairies granted wishes. They don't, she replied. Like us, they joke and play especially with travelers like yourself. But I'm sure the fairy appreciated your response, and our travels will continue without any mischief. Mischief? I asked. I'm sure if you had asked for something selfish, she might not have been impressed and might have teased you constantly while we were walking through this part of the forest. Laughing, I sat across from Selena, and we enjoyed some hot tea brewed on top of a fire she started before we both lay down to sleep amongst the trees, flowers, and stars. That's the end of this page, Esther said. Her brother was, for once, speechless. That was a very interesting account, her mother said. But, now that the candle has burned down to the bottom, it is time for all to go to bed to rest. We can discuss this in the morning. Esther's mother gave her and her brother a hug and a kiss and sent them off to bed. Sleep well, Mom, they both said in almost unison. Their mother knew neither of them would sleep well that night as their dreams would be filled with travels, strange and beautiful forests and fairies. I hope I have made the correct decision, she thought. And that's the end of this part. Good night, sleep tight. <laughs>